Good afternoon. Thanks for uh, coming to my talk today on the coffee can radar optimized in the AWR uh, design environment. Uh, my name is Jim Carroll. I work for AWR along with uh, Gint Paparisto, who is helping me on a lot of the system design uh, diagrams that you're going to be seeing here in a little bit. I wanted to go over real quickly my motivation for doing this project. Uh, about in 2012 time frame, IEEE Spectrum came up with an article entitled Coffee Can Radar, where they described how to build a synthetic uh, aperture radar um, using a laptop coffee can radar system that they derived from the MIT Open Courseware uh, that was published, I think, about a year or so before that from uh, the MIT group. Uh, a little bit after that, as, as I travel along, talking to all my customers, I actually started seeing these coffee can radars on their desks and I hang on their walls and stuff like that. So you could actually see people doing this in the field and, and actually liking the experience of building their own radar. And then about a year ago, Steve Fallon um, from the Shoulders of Giants organization, which is a Dallas non-for-profit that does educational type of projects for high schools, um, had seen all these articles before and had talked to me about making an inexpensive surface mount solution that was the same topology as the uh, original uh, radar, but was a lot cheaper that he could get out into the high school system. So just to give an overview of the open courseware very quickly, these uh, four, or excuse me, five professors over at MIT uh, put together this series of lectures where they described uh, how radar systems work, RF systems, how to put this radar together, how to use it, and then actually how to process the information to get ranging from this radar system. It was based on the open band uh, 2.4 gigahertz ISM Wi-Fi frequencies. So the parts they used were connectorized mini circuits parts that they would put together uh, just by screwing on the SMA connectors. Um, a lot of the rest of the stuff was just uh, breadboard components, and then they used a laptop to sample the, the down-converted IF so they could do baseband processing with MATLAB. So here's a picture I, I pulled out of their, their pitches of the entire thing. The uh, connectorized components you see are here on the top of the board, and then uh, the two uh, coffee can antennas on the top. I'm overlaying the system diagram on top of that. You can see they had a VCO, a little attenuator buffer between the power amp and the VCO, a 3dB coupler, goes out to the transmit antenna, goes out to the target, comes back from the target into the receive path. LNA self-mixes down from the VCO signal with the mixer. And then at this point, that's where they're extracting out the uh, baseband information with their laptop sound card and then doing the processing in MATLAB. The bomb cost of this entire thing at that time was about $360. Um, $240 of that was these mini circuit components. Again, keep in mind these are Wi-Fi band components, right? Uh, the cantinas, uh, most of that is cabling, connectors, and things like that. I'm not sure if they had coffee cost of uh, drinking two pots of two cans of coffee in that, but the entire thing was about $360. And the thought was that. Um, we can make that a lot cheaper by using surface mount parts. So what I did first was I implemented the original system as it was designed in the MIT cor Open Courseware with uh, our visual system simulator, system simulator, where each of the blocks are just mathematical models in our system design software. So you see I've just re-implemented the entire, entire block diagram representing the can antennas by a gain antenna element. And all of this is just mathematical in nature, but they're VSS system blocks that it can put down. I am taking advantage of the fact that we have a radar library built in our, our software. So things like the target model and the baseband processing, I'm able to pull in as blocks and then use those just uh, inherently because they're built in. I took the exact same system and instead of using the mini circuit parts, I actually went out and found uh, equivalent parts that I could buy off of just Mauser or DigiKey. Uh, these are parts that are usually more like in the one or two dollar range, like this uh, power amp, uh, the LNA and the mixer. Oops, sorry. Um, those are just uh, surface mount parts that you can get right out of their catalog, look at the data sheet, figure out how to hook it up on a board and, and be off and running. 
There are other components like the uh, attenuator, the low pass filter, and the coupler, which I chose to do on board. So the attenuator and the low pass filter, I used surface mount components, did a little design for those. Uh, the coupler was just a broadband, uh, excuse me, a, a 20 dB coupler I implemented with MicroStrip uh, on the board. The Vivaldi antennas you see here, I replaced the coffee can antennas with a different kind of planar antenna called the Vivaldi antenna. It's a, a very common kind of antenna that I was able to design in our Axiom software, which is our 3D planar solution, and then validate in our uh, analyst uh, full 3D FEM solution. And uh, put this all together and I wanted to make a system comparison between the before and the after. So you can see that comparison here. The blue is the, uh, the blue is the older system, the original system. You see it starts out with a higher output power from the VCO than my little uh, surface mount component. But as you go through the system with, uh, from the VCO to the PA, to the 3DB coupler they have on their system, to the antenna, you can actually see that um, my system, because it just uses better parts in terms of the power amp in particular, gets higher output power at the, um, uh, at the antenna. So when you look at the output power of the antenna, in their system there are about 20 dBm of equivalent isotropic radiated power. The newer system gets about a watt, which is just below or maybe just right at the FCC limit for a high directive, directivity antenna like the Vivaldi. You have the path loss being modeled to the target and back uh, with our radar library components, which actually adds on not only the velocity uh, Doppler shift, but also the, the phase change due to the path loss of the distance. And then coming back through to the LNA and mixer, you can see that the uh, older system was getting about 45 dBm, uh, minus 45 dBm of IF power for this input power versus the newer system, which gets uh, 20 d minus 20 dBm. And what this says on this budget calculations is that the newer system has a lot more higher output power at IF, which is easier to detect for the same target than the older system. So it's a superior system uh, shown here on this graph, the newer one is. So the nice thing about our software is that once you build the block diagrams, you can actually go in then and do time domain simulations of the same things. This is budgeting, it's harmonic balance budgeting based on the mathematical models. You can then send in the frequency modulated signal. In this case, I'm sending a triangle wave or a chirp signal. So it ramps up, ramps down, ramps up, ramps down to create an FMCW signal that the original Arthurs had done in their system. And what's of interest here is once you take that IF out of the, the simulation, you can, we do a Fourier transform on it to look at this frequency domain. And what's interesting here is this peak. This peak is your target. Now the radar engineers, actually what they usually look at is not this truncated spectrum, but a fully unfolded spectrum that has negative and positive frequencies. And you'll see two peaks in, a, in an FMCW system. The distance between the peaks and then how they're offset to zero describes your velocity and your speed, excuse me, your speed and your distance. And we have baseband processing blocks that do all that extraction for you. You just attach them to the IF in the simulation, and you get this not only this spectrum, but in the next chart, you can actually start graphing out target distance and target velocity. Now, this is the money shot here, right? This is the true comparison between the two systems. Remember, they're, they're looking at the same target, one square meter target that's uh, 20 kilometers per hour velocity and a target distance of 100 meters. Now they both nail the target distance pretty much exactly the same with very low noise in there. But it's the velocity that's the harder thing to, to discriminate out of these signals coming out. And what you'll see is the green, the redesigned system is varying just about plus or minus four kilometers per hour on 20 kilometer, in this case minus 20 because it's going away, uh, average. And, but the blue is way up here, much higher. But if you let this time domain simulation uh, run, what you'll see is the blue goes up and down and up and down, and it eventually averages out to 20. And what this chart tells you with the new redesign system, you don't have to average your time domain signal as long with the new system because you have a much better target return on the IF path than you do with the older system. So 
the alert system would still work, you just have a lot harder time discriminating out that velocity from the signal. So the other thing we did is after I did the systems diagram, I felt pretty confident I had a, something that was interesting and would work. I did the layout in our software. You can actually see the VCO, uh, the, the PA, and the LNA just taken right out of the data sheets and produced you know, from their, uh, what they showed the layouts were for the data sheets. I designed the one dB attenuator, the uh, low pass filter, and then the board coupler using our circuit design software as well as our Axiom simulator for the coupler. And then the total bomb for this three by three card uh, was uh, less than $25. That's components that are going on onto the board. So that's a very favorable in comparison to the 250 with the previous system. Uh, you can see the, the you know, there's some 80 some odd SMT conductors and the connectors are actually the most expensive part, uh, individual parts on the whole system. To mate with this, actually, in the, uh, the coffee cans, uh, I replaced them with these Vivaldi planner antennas. Uh, basically, you have a microstrip, element, a microstrip line coming on the front side of the board that couples to a slot in the back. That slot then propagates out in this horn-like structure that's patterned in the backside ground. So think of it as sort of as a horn that's been squished. It's a pretty common type of antenna uh, in, in radar systems. You can do that. I designed this entirely in uh, uh, Axiom, which is our, our method of moments simulator. You can see the blue is the simulated, and then the pink is uh, measurements I was able to do on a, on a VNA and fairly good agreement for first cut, I think. I did a pattern analysis, uh, a full pattern analysis with um, Analyst, our finite element tool uh, of the same structure. And then this pattern actually feed back into the VSS diagram as a full pattern. So instead of just putting in a you know, uh, 5.43 dB of gain at bore site, I could actually tell it 90 degrees bore site theta and, and phi, and I can move that around in the system diagram, and you'll get readings of the, the entire system changing as you go around the, the targets. So when you put it all together, um, you have this, which I brought up here. I actually have real hardware. Um, the 3x3 three three card, a little 3D printed case I made for it, that was a lot of fun. Uh, the Vivaldi antennas for the tra transmit receive, a little power supply I bought off the internet. Um, entire RF uh, test bed for a radar system all in the palm of your hand. So in conclusion, I was able to do a system comparisons between the two systems, the older one and the new one, pretty easily in our software, uh, VSS software. I made uh, use of our built-in library elements to do the baseband processing, but also supply the target, so I didn't actually have to build that, that up with base units uh, in our VSS software. Um, I did the full radar layout, uh, including EM analysis of the, the planar antennas and a full layout of the radar board. And then I did uh, co-simulation of the radar elements with the antennas, board coupler, attenuator, uh, and the low-pass filter as circuit elements being done in the system simulation all at the same time. In the end, what we end up was uh, somewhat of an end-to-end -end system fully designed within the microwave office uh, and VSS uh, design environment. It has better performance. It's actually a, a cheaper and smaller footprint than the original system. And I'm sort of considering this in, in the spirit of the open course where uh, it's still an open course, open source project. We're gonna be including this full project VSS diagrams, the, the radar lay, layout, and everything in our next release of our software as an example project. So you can actually open it up, play with it yourself, redesign it, make it better, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm.